Hi, this is Six Five Media on the road at RSA Conference 2024, and we're continuing the conversation with Infoblox. And I'm joined by uh, Renee Burton, Dr. Renee Burton. Uh, you lead threat intelligence for Infoblox. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's going to be a great conversation. And I kind of want to start out with, um, th you know, the fact that through DNS, Infoblox is discovering threat actors of all kinds, shapes, and forms. Um, so can you kind of explain, like, how you're doing that? I mean, I know personally, as a mathematician, you have several patents that have been issued in, in this area. But, but how is Infoblox doing this? So um, the main way we're doing it is by using a combination of expertise in uh, data science, mm -hmm. which you can get, uh, threat intelligence, which you can get, and DNS, which is a lot harder to get. Right. So bringing those three pieces together into a large platform that can absorb tens of billions of records every day and have like lots of different specific algorithms to come out and identify suspicious domains and malicious domains um, is our kind of secret sauce into it. It's that mm -hmm. combination of the world where you actually have the expertise in DNS in particular, sure. as well as these other areas. Well, bad actors can use DNS to their advantage as well, right? So how do you combat that? So they do, right? So they actually thrive in DNS. And in part of that, we think about it traditionally, uh, networking and security are really quite separate. Sure. So networking guys are running the DNS. They're mm -hmm. the DNS operators and the security guys are running the SOC and various other parts of the security stack. They often don't even have access, right? There's no communication mm -hmm. between these two groups. And in the schools, we don't teach DNS. So people learn about malware. They go to university. They learn how to do reverse right. engineering. They learn about phishing. Where are you going to learn about DNS? It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So we haven't built that into our industry and into our culture. Sure. And then bad actors, on the other hand, are taking full advantage of that. So they can actually learn it themselves mm -hmm. and thrive registering you know, tens of thousands of domains, or even if it's just a few, Right. They can run for a very long time with no one detecting them because sure. no one's paying any attention. Right. No, I think it's incredible like how the Infobox technology can, you know, determine these and, um, you know, web, you know, domains can be set up and they can be weaponized immediately. And I want to talk to you about that a little bit more. But then they can remain dormant for, for years and years. So I just I find it incredible that Infobox is leveraging DNS to, to be able to root that sort of thing out. Right. Yeah, this, the the spectrum of that domain lifecycle is really, it, ha it's, it happens at all levels. So right. for a while, back, say, 2009, 2010, people would register a domain mm -hmm. phishing, mm -hmm. and they'd use it right away. And then people got smart, and they were like, oh, let's stop, learn about things that are new, registered, right. and stop them. So then they started strategically aging, and that strategic aging we see typically being say, seven mm -hmm. to 30 days for most kind of Not like a crime. fine wine, but... <laughs> yeah, not like the fine wine. The, uh, the solar winds attack that was in 2020, they yeah. had aged that like two and a half years. So wow. it, some a actors will age a lot more. Sure. But what we've seen since maybe summer 2021, 2022, mm -hmm. you've seen this really large increase in the availability of ransomware and specifically for multi-factor authentication mm -hmm. lookalikes, the ability to do those kind of attacks. Sure. Since those are lookalikes, now they need to operate really fast. Right. And so they'll register and use a domain within an hour or two hours. Mm -hmm. So it's gone even to a more extreme sure. uh, avenue there. Wow, that's crazy. Well, I want to talk about some animals. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, good animals. <laughs> yeah, like a seahorse, a puma, a viper, a dog, and now a meerkat. Right? Yep. And uh, this is a way that Infoblox is able to sort of label and identify certain threat actors, right? Um, and so I'd love to talk about um, how you detect that, how you're protecting your customers. But maybe before we jump into that, how do you come up with these, these naming schemes? It sounds like a, a very uh, eclectic zoo. <laughs> right. <laughs> In some sense, it is. Yeah. So what we're trying to do is find a way to uh, create a framework that in some ways can be memorable. Sure. Because there are actually... We've published, I think, six papers in the last year with different animals. Right. But on the other hand, we actually have in in the wings, you know, hundreds of more. Right. And we want to have that be a way in which if you hear meerkat, you know that that's about MX records. And right. if you hear uh, Viper, you know that that's about a traffic distribution system that's fairly complex. Right. So there's kind of a theme, a theme to that. But okay. it's also... 
catchy and interesting and you can remember it. It is. And I think it gives it gives you credit as a company for being the first to identify it as well, right? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. In, in the DNS arena. So we're really sure. trying to focus on things that are really unique. Like nobody sure. else has ever talked about this at all. Right. Um, and those are the ones that we're reserving for that kind of publication level. Okay. So you identify it with the creative naming scheme. So, and, and then how do you inform and protect customers? So our product suite um, includes security, uh, mm -hmm. which you can think of in a lot of different ways. So it's DNS detection and response. Some people talk about it as protective DNS. Some people might think of it as a DNS firewall. There's a lot of ways in which you can think about it. Some mm -hmm. people might just think of it as block lists, right? right? We're a very yeah. simplistic way of doing it. But we act as uh, the recursive resolver, whether that be on-prem, uh, from a mobile device, laptop, or in the cloud. And then during the recursive resolution process, we're able to consult, do we think this is suspicious? Do we think this sure. is malicious? Yeah. And then block or redirect those queries. So that's how the customers are protected. Okay. And um, is there any sort of, um, I guess, nomenclature around severity and impact as well within each of the kind of the categories? Yeah, we're... Um, we're actually re releasing new versions of this, but we have ways in which we calculate everything as being malicious. That's going to be our confirmed malicious. And then within suspicious, which we've actually found to be, um, it's like that razor edge of protectant, protection for our customers. So over the last year, we've been measuring that a lot. And you're able to see that in the news afterwards, mm -hmm. um, particularly related to ransomware, frankly, mm -hmm. Cobalt Strike and various other exfil, we had those domains in our suspicious uh, feeds already. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to see that customers were protected from the very first DNS query. Mm -hmm. So there was no COBOL strike. There was no data exfiltration. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have detected data exfiltration because even the first packet was blocked, right? Even right. the first query yeah. uh, was blocked. Right, which is awesome. I mean, being proactive versus reactive. Right, so exactly. Those, those types of threats. So, I like to circle back on the whole notion of zero day DNS and it sounds pretty ominous. Um, but you know, what what's critical uh, to exposing these these bad actors? Because I mean, it's sort of mind blowing for me that that your platform can can sense this within a matter of minutes and and be able to block it. So like what's you know, you talked about the secret sauce earlier. Like what what's what's the architecture behind all that? Yeah, so zero-day DNS is a direct response to this increased threat. Um, and there, we see that in a couple of different ways, but specifically with multi-factor authentication, mm -hmm. lookalike attacks. Those have been the source of just about every single major uh, breach in the last year and a half or two, two years. Okay. And so what we saw from different cases, and these do come out of customer cases, mm -hmm. was we had identified that a domain was suspicious, but we were several hours too late. It was like, this is really cool you identified it, but I needed to know, so, you know, yeah. six hours earlier. We were finding that they were registering and using this domain within one or two hours, and that's before any newly observed domain feed or anything like that is going to be able to see them. Mm -hmm. So we ended up building special purpose, uh, you know, special purpose technology behind it mm -hmm. that is not just kind of URLs, right? This is all DNS that we've seen that we're able to say, have we ever seen this before? Is this registered? And make a very fast decision on that. Sure. And if we haven't, be able to block that for our customers okay. going forward. Okay. Awesome. Um, this sounds kind of like a paradox, but I know that Infoblox has been on a, a migration path to move from being a threat aggregator to actually being a creator, right? So mm -hmm. can you can you provide a little bit of context on that in the, in the journey? Yeah, so Infoblox um, started in the security business around 2015, and they took sort of two angles. One was they were the first uh, company to release a streaming detection for mm -hmm. data exfiltration and DJs, and we still do that. We have advanced those algorithms. That's that where, where's your data, day right. DNS is living. Yeah. But then for their main um, their main uh, mm -hmm. firewall blocks, let's say those block lists, mm -hmm. uh, they were using data aggregation, which means I'm getting my sources like essentially almost every single person on the floor 
at RSA or Black Hat or anywhere, mm-hmm. they're either selling data for, for data aggregation or their intel is coming from data aggregation. Right. So they buy it from different sources, right. primarily from incident response or from- And that phrase the telemetry and the fidelity of all of that. Right? Exactly. Yeah. But that sounds great, right? <laughs> right. More is more. It right. sounds really good. More is good. <laughs> uh, but in DNS, it's the worst possible thing that you can okay. do. So the reason that we moved from being an aggregator, you go aggregation curation to creator, the reason that we moved is because curated data from the sources that are, especially that are available on the market, will fail you 100% of the time. And what happens, we're going back to that networking guy and the security guy, is you've bought someone else's intel, Mm -hmm. you've put it into your product, and now you've blocked GitLab, GitHub, or you've blocked Google, or you've blocked Microsoft. And, and you're killing your productivity internally. And that networking guy is going to say, like, uh-oh, yeah. I'm just going to turn that product <laughs> off, right? And it's a very visceral sort of response because sure. it ruins it ruins their life. So we went with um, our real reason for changing was because curation, it, no matter how good we did it, mm-hmm. was negatively impacting our customers mm-hmm. and those Intel sources weren't actually finding the real threats. Okay. So by creation, it's 100% DNS. That's all we do. We do it every day. It's very specific. And we're getting a broad spectrum of threats and being able to protect those customers earlier with like almost no false positives. Yeah. It's ridiculously low. Wow. It's impressive. So as we wind up our conversation, I want to talk a little bit about this whole notion of consolidation. And I'm seeing this as a trend as an analyst, um, and I, I talk to a lot of customers, and I talk to a lot of infrastructure providers like Infoblox, and there's this whole notion of like, you know, point solution sprawl, got to consolidate that. Um, and so I'm wondering, um, there are a lot of security products out there, so w- why should customers consider Infoblox? I mean, is it going to be additive? Is it going to create more complexity from a SecOps perspective? What What's your take on that? So... The reason that you should consider it is because the fact that nobody's paying attention to DNS, and we're seeing over and over again, and we released last week Muddling Meerkat. This is a Chinese nation state operation that's been going on for three and a half, four and a half years without detection. There's so much going on in DNS. The most valuable thing you can do as an enterprise, particularly one who has proprietary information, customer information, is to control your DNS. Don't allow that mm-hmm. DNS to go elsewhere. So you need to be able to do that. And then you need to be able to protect it, right? First is control it, second is protect it. And Infoblox has been in the DNS business longer than anyone else. It's a 25 year old company. Yeah. And it is the, the leader in that concept. So we are the experts there. And at the same time, from the protection perspective, mm-hmm. we're the only ones who specialize in DNS Intel, absolutely right. the only ones in the market. Yeah. Um, so. How does that, I think what ends up happening, you were asking about the impact on the sure. SOC, right? And the right. SecOps mm-hmm. perspective. Yeah. So uh, I come out of a perspective where I want to reduce that load on the mm-hmm. on the SOC, and I don't want to reduce the load by refining all the data for them. Mm-hmm. I'm going to reduce the load because it never happened. Right. We blocked it in the first place. So. And you don't actually need to worry about it. And if you talk to a SOC guy, mm-hmm. that's actually what they're you know, interested, right? Sure. Don't give me more alerts. You just didn't, it just didn't happen. Because I'm fatigued already, already with all those alerts. Right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And we're even seeing in, um, we're getting reports from customers that when they start protecting their DNS and when they turn on the aggressive intel that we're offering them, they're reducing the load on their firewalls. I saw a report a week or two ago from a customer saying they reduced the load on their firewall by over 50%. That's huge. So Eliminating 50% of the overhead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very know that all out. Um, yeah, you know, from my perspective, it just provides another layer of protection for enterprises. It doesn't, pro- you know, um, add any overhead in that scenario. And to your point, um, Infoblox is one of the only companies, if not the only company, that's really leaning into DNS to provide improved uh, security resiliency and, and networking capabilities as well. Right, exactly. Yeah. So we are seeing people start to move more, um, sort of following us into that into that area, and, and particularly as governments are pushing the productive yeah. DNS. So you can see people coming more into that. But a DNS is really hard. Mm-hmm. Um, it is really, really hard. It's very sketchy. It's very arcane. Mm-hmm. And so you have to build up the expertise sure. in order to do it well. Yeah. 
Well, hey, Renee, thanks for taking the time. Um, it's been a fascinating discussion, just hearing your perspective, you know, leading Threat, in, uh, threat Intel for the company and um, have a great rest of your conference. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for hosting. I appreciate it.